This is old cow. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about... Uh, how everybody knows the miraculous fall of the unemployment figures below those what our president took over with. And, uh, you know, it's now 7.8% unemployment. Actually, I would seen in the news today that unemployment figures dropped and were the lowest for 44 months. Wait, 44 months? How long has Obama been president? 44 months. Yes. So, I mean, we're, we're basically moving it this way. None of the none of the financial channels say that there's any validity to that whatsoever because it works. You need 200 to 250,000 jobs created to drop it, mm. mm -hmm. and you got 114,000 jobs created, and that dropped it almost five tenths of a point. Mm -hmm. So uh, they they said that that was sort of now you can feel why he was such a smart ass, cool and everything, and because they already that, planned it, they already See, knew that they were going to put it up. See, part of it with unemployment figures is they traditionally, well, uh, wait, they traditionally do them the same way all the time. Yeah. But they have changed in how they calculate unemployment in the last several years to help lower the unemployment rate. Which isn't there. The unemployment rate is is well. Uh, they said it's like 14% unemployed and 22% underemployed. But they, here's how they come up with. They're probably announcing. 800 and eight over 800,000 jobs were actually created. 104, the 100 and the 14,000 that was just the one figure, but calls were made in people's homes and they found out that eight over 800,000 people got jobs in the month of September. See, now that's kind of odd because September, okay, now if it was like late October, early November, you think it's holiday hiring, right? Yeah. September. I know. What is that back to school hire? They don't hire more no, people. No, they they back to they uh, they did admit that of of those eight hundred and some thousand, ninety percent were um, were were service jobs. And if some of you are sitting there thinking, well, wait a minute, school goes back in session because it's back to school, and so the teachers, no, the teachers are employed all year round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't go back. I mean, they although they start the, working, they they they've been on the figures all year long. Uh, basically, there was many many four letter words about how this president does business. They basically said it was typical Chicago politics. They uh, uh, every one of the things also agreed is that after the election, they're going to do a revision back to over eight percent after the president has been reelected. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, but see, the problem is it stinks. I mean, it really. Um, the presidents tend to cook the books on the thing. They, they, they you know, like uh, they would do something like the, that. Our president adds people to the employment roles that are okay. Part-time job is not supposed to be on this thing. It's not supposed to be. This is for full-time workers. Mm -hmm. And then even the president will admit, well, these are service sector jobs, and that's not good enough. But then his people are out. It's a well-known fact. That we see, it doesn't make any difference. They got jobs. It doesn't make any difference what type of job because they lead to full time employment. And then the people that are the economic experts, even on his side of the issue, say, well, no, full time jobs in the service industry don't exist. They're all part time work. Mm -hmm. And um, the, so they don't lead. Uh, they, they admit that almost all of the jobs, or was it 80 to 90,000 of the so called 114,000, which was actually under their estimates. They went under their estimates and they put them are service jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not well paying jobs. They said there are the well paying jobs are not being done. The people are not getting those jobs. So if the economy isn't getting any boost and then they said, well it jumped the stock market today. Well yeah, let's see, um, Obama is in control of what industry? Mm -hmm. The banking industry, guess uh -huh. who, basically who, whose stock went up today? Uh -huh. Obama's in control of the automobile industry, guess whose stock went ah. up today? Obama's in control of the pharmaceutical, guess whose stocks went up today? Imagine how that Obama's happened. basically in control of the, of, of, uh, of, uh, of the insurance agencies, guess whose stock went up today? Mm -hmm. Every single thing that our president has his finger in basically are all buying in there. Here's the next trick. They're not being bought by people. They're being traded among the traders. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, who is the President of the United States threatened with huge, massive, you know, with a disaster? It's called the traders. Mm -hmm. And um, so all of a sudden, you've got huge stock market gains, you know, for two days in a row. I mean, okay, everybody in the unit, okay, I, I heard that one of the guys said on Bloomberg this morning, he said, um, he, he said that, 
they're, they're taking something on Wall Street. And he mm -hmm. said, because he said, this is like from Alice in Wonderland, you know, like the, you know, like they're, they're, they're using the mushrooms because there is no route. Every, every company under the sun is being downgraded because they're 13, they're listing it as a disastrous year. Mm -hmm. We're on the verge of a double, or actually according to the rules, we are in a double dip recession. Uh, okay, they revised the factory stuff downward this morning. All of those figures that you got Monday saying how great the factory sector was doing, Factory orders were down by 5.2% today. Mm -hmm. uh, home sales were down again. New home starts were down again. Everything is going downward, yet our president's people reported today how great things are. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I mean, don't they only report the truth? The truth is what you make out to be. Uh, this is, I'm going to try something like the debate thing. <laughs> Mark, here's what um, Mark Twain said about debates. He said, uh, he said, the only good thing about a debate is it allows you to get some extra sleep. What? And then the second one, another one is the, the problem with debates is you only listen to the points you already support or believe in. So you don't hear anything else in a debate but that. You know, they did come out on Facebook. They had been sending it out for the presidential debates. They had a presidential drinking game. Yeah. And they enlisted, it's like, take an extra drink whenever such and such happens, or such and such happens, or they use this word, or they use that word. I'm thinking, you know, that's fabulous, because actually with the drinking game, people are actually listening to what they say at the debate. Yeah, they're having <laughs> I mean, drinks, but no, but that if you're unemployed and can't find a job, you know that this was the biggest bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. I mean, they said this office is supposed to be independent, and they now know this president has totally got his fingers into it, because... Yeah. Um, I heard people this morning flat out wanting criminal prosecution of this president for what he's doing because the, he's got all of these people in violation of all the laws actually actively involved in the re-election campaign of the president. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did, they, they just found it irresponsible. I mean, I saw people this morning basically my age that have been in the business forever went ballistic about these figures. Oh, they did. Oh, God, a guy said. He, he, he said, you know, um, you're talking, we're talking about a black man. They call this man nothing but, a, what do we call him, a black SOB in the White Ooh. House. And he said, he said, you can't drop the unemployment rate when you only get less than half of what you need to drop it any. He said, it's math, it's a Chicago math which means that a person can vote 140 times. In, okay, I, I worked but, on a movie. But, but what's wrong with that? No, but <laughs> I, I worked on a movie uh, called The Great McGinty with Brian Dun Dunleavy, where Brian Dunleavy ended up the governor of the state of, uh, of Illinois. He made his mark by basically you know, going out and going to, basically he went to a, a, a graveyard and took everybody's names off and put on a piece of paper. Oh, I'm Joe Blow. Mm -hmm. I'm Harry Harvey. I'm Harvey Harry. I'm James Smith. I'm Helena. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Helena. I'm, uh, that's my name. I'm, I'm Greek. I'm Helena. Mm -hmm. You know, so he basically, and he goes into where the mop, where the, where the town boss is, and he's getting, uh, uh, they, they got chips to show they voted, and he's getting paid for each, my God. He said, how many times? Oh, 140. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is a man like we need. And he rose to the political ranks to be governor of the state. It's a comedy by Preston Sanders. <laughs> but that's Chicago. You listen. I told everybody, if you go back, I flat out told you he was going to have an unemployment figure that was less than when he came in. Well, we created, we've created 900,000 more jobs that were lost. In other words, people are voting with their pocketbooks and it's the illusion that the economy is doing better. Right. Oh, wait a minute, aren't we in a recovery cycle? We're basically, we're in a recession. Okay. Uh, at the same... Oh, was I being satirical? Yeah. They, they said that, um, that uh, no, it, it just... This man is basically, you're, you're going to get, okay, only the people that, okay, basically did they say that it changed one vote today for Obama? No, mm -hmm. because, um, okay, here's one of the pollsters said, oh my God, he can't be that stupid. Mm -hmm. That's what the pollster said, he can't be that stupid mm -hmm. to pull something like that before the election. I mean, God, I told you he was going to do it. I can go, you can go back, you know, I flat out told you, you were going to have a miraculous unemployment figure less than when he took office. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 
And since he controls the stock market at the moment, mm -hmm. the market's going up. But they said, Oh, I imagine that. And when does it go up? It, it, yeah, it's going on up. On low volume. On low when volume. When does it go down? On high volume. That's how it works because uh, high volume means people are buying and people are not. I mean, you've got to listen to the people, the companies, the major companies on the Dow that have been down. down they're, they're basically put to neutral from buy. They're on the verge of being, you know, dumped to a no buy thing because their 213 estimates are disastrous. I mean, some of them are almost not even going to be in business in 213 because they said that nobody has any money. Isn't they not buying anything? I mean, uh, they know service sector things are nice, but I mean, um, but if nobody can, nobody going to buy anything in the stores. We've seen almost all the stores with less health now. Everywhere you go, they're working skeleton crews, so they're not hiring anybody because they, nobody's buying anything. But um, you know, it just pisses me off that you've got people in the press that support the president that basically say, you know, the hell with this country. We're going to have Barack Obama even if he destroys the nation. We've got to, you know, if you don't support the... I'm going to explain the rule of thumb to everyone out there. Well, how can you say things like that? You're a racist. No. What, what is my mom and my grandparents? Indians. Yeah, which means I, I, I'm listed by the United States Senate as an American Indian because my grandparents and my mother are all Indian. And we can tell that she's sort of Asian. Uh -huh. And according to the Attorney General of the United States, it is impossible for a, for a minority to be a racist. Because you're talking, really? that's right, you're talking about one of your own, so you cannot be a racist. First of all, I am more of what I am than Obama is of what he is. Yes, you are. Definitely more than what he is, because I have grandparents on both sides of my family that are Indians. He's and I am definitely more because I am, yes, believe I'll, it or not. Somebody said, really, they exist? I am 100% Chinese. Yeah, well, I, I also... My, you know, the, my young lady was also, she referred to herself as a Jap. Mm -hmm. She was a Japanese-American princess. Her mother, I mean, uh, she's got, her father was German and her mother was Japanese. So she was, a, you know, she was about as, you know. And she was Japanese and Jewish. A Japanese and Jewish was a good A double one. Jap. <laughs> yeah, a double Jap. Jap. That's why she called herself a, a Japanese-American princess, the Jewish part. But, no, but... Um, I, 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 I mean, I used to like the man personally, mm -hmm. but people basically are starting to dislike the man personally now. They, they think of him, as, you know, uh, they think that he, he, he's in office for one thing and one thing only. It's not to run the country. I mean, the guy doesn't really give a well, damn about running the country. You know, I think a lot of people, like in the presidential debate, I think a lot of people that were supporters became disillusioned. Oh God! I because mean, because he didn't have a teleprompter. You're telling? I mean, they're telling him they're actually wanting to have Obama with a teleprompter. Well, they said that uh, that Romney can have a teleprompter too. No, Romney is a businessman. He has to go into business with the thing sitting in front of him, not on a teleprompter. But they are actually talking are about bending the rules. So that a they teleprompter know. can be there because... I don't think they've ever had a teleprompter during debates. That is They like, want a teleprompter brought in because this is a this is from no less than Phil Moore. Oh my God, the man had... He, well, I, I he can't even, without a teleprompter. I can't even imagine a teleprompter during a debate because then it's like you do the question, here's your response, and then here's your response. No, it, they're it, going you to give well have you what it means on a teleprompter I mean, is somebody's going to be typing in his response. Okay. Nobody, I think, uh, there used to be a newsman called, I think, George Putnam. Basically, he was a really nice guy. He rode in road freight for like 30-some years. And um, he was famous for... Oh, they did that show called Anchorman with yeah, Will Ferrell. Yeah, based yeah. on him. And he would read anything they put in front of him. It's just like the character in a Mary Tyler Moore show that Ted Knight played was based on the character. Whatever they wrote, and he would read it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the and, uh, Remember that. Whatever they wrote, he would, he would read, read it. it. Didn't make any difference what it was. They would basically put things on that were basically, and uh, and an asteroid is going to hit the Earth, and we're all going to die in 15 minutes. And then he would go, ladies and gentlemen, I have some very serious news for you. An asteroid is about to hit the Earth, and in 15 minutes, we're all all life on the Earth is coming to an end. And they'd be back. They. <laughs>
<laughs> and then you'd hear from the actually I worked on that station backstage and they would like you, what did you, you do to you, him? You would hear the guy, What the hell did you people just do to him? again? And it wasn't April Fool's. No, it wasn't April Fool's. And then they put the thing on. Oh folks, they were just having fun with me. The earth is not coming to an end. It's coming to an end in twenty minutes. <laughs> But this is exactly, I mean, they are really disappointed in his president. They, they said that if you were disappointed in his performance, you're more disappointed. They said it backfired. I mean, his supporters that are totally really supporters are cheering the people that are on the edge. They, what the hell can't that, you know, we know that, that the unemployment rate didn't drop that. We can do math. For Christ's sake, we actually went to school. When one they could teach mathematics, and we know that if you have to have 800 and some thousand real jobs to drop at half a point, you can't have 800,000 imaginary jobs to do it, which is what they came up with. Mm -hmm. They based the drop on something that is not official, mm -hmm. totally. It be basically, it's ran by people to support the president and his re-election campaign. Well, we did a survey and we called up people. We found that 800 mm -hmm. plus thousand people are now working that weren't working last month. Mm -hmm. No, they weren't working, they're not working, period. They just called, hey, uh, hey, I, I have a, I'm, I'm, I'm with the Barack Obama re-election campaign. Do you support the president? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me, are you working today and you weren't working last month? Oh, will this help the president? He said, yes, I'm working today. I wasn't working last month, but I'm working today. He said, oh. This is just between the two of us. Were you working before? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and are you working all the time? It wasn't like, are you fully employed? No. Or maybe you're No, like, they did. They, are they, you working? They, uh, they, were, they did ask over two, and it said 90% of the people that they made that thing all said they were doing part-time work. Oh. Not full-time, part-time work. So, and, uh, but I find it, you know, it just, it sucks. Everybody says it sucks. He just, and Bob, uh, Romney is going to chew his ass out on the next thing. I mean, I do not want to be the the poor people. I mean, he's got to sit there for the next until that thing, and then Ryan is going to eat Biden alive. Mm -hmm. Biden has already said, you know, we've won this election because we've created 860,000 jobs this month, in some month of September. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. That, 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 uh, now you know how he's going to get to those 12 million jobs he promised. His, his campaign manager, Cutler, said he's going to create 12 million jobs. Well, um, okay, uh, okay, uh, we, uh, uh, do you support the President of the United States? Yes. Uh, were you working before this phone call was made? And he said, well, what should I say? The President doesn't want you working. Oh, okay. And he said, how many people do you know that weren't working before I made, um, a million? There is a verified statement that well, one million and, people have been added to. A lot of times when they do the surveys, you can kind of tell what answer they're looking for. Yeah. Because I've been part of things before where they say, well, you know, to qualify for this, it would be helpful if your response was... Oh, God. I mean, we they, 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 they ask the question. Right? They'll, they'll go, if you want to support somebody, you go to a neighborhood that supports the right. president. Or, the or question. you know what? Your, your stuff is really close. Um... You know, if we did... <laughs> okay, okay. say you're doing a telephone survey. Now they're only using cell phones, which since most people don't have cell phones. And really, they call up Harlem. And they say, do you support the President of the United States in Harlem? He said, yes. You know, it would be very helpful with the President of the United States re-election if you told us how many people live in Harlem. Oh, uh, I don't know, but 12 million. And he said, how many of those 12 million people do you know have gotten a job in the last 24 hours? 12 million? Though we have just hit our 12 million figure. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's being done at the moment. It's becoming a farce. I know. And it's, really, it's really kind of disgusting. It's pathetic. I mean, God, you don't... I mean, this was something really... I mean, you've got to believe that the Congress going to ball with this one. Mm -hmm. Well, the president had his friends manufacture 800,000 jobs. <laughs> you know, they said, did they manufacture it before he had that performance or the day after? Well... I just showed you how they do it. Mm -hmm. They call one person up. How many people in your community, how many people do you think support the president? Do you think those people were working before yesterday? And he said, well, what do you want me to say? I, the president would like your help. Okay, 12 million people were not working before yesterday. And, work, and then they'll say, well, we've, the president has already created 12 million jobs. Mm -hmm. So I guess you're going you're gonna to hear more about this part. So fact or, fi fact or figures. Wait. No, fact or fiction? Are okay. the figures correct? I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do this before I'm going to tell you show you how 
a person is a product of the Democrat of the Democratic really school system counts to through counts to two. Two. That's how it's done. Until next time, this is all. Yeah. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more information, you can go to www.montybubble.net on the net or to our more commercial site, which is www.mbn. Dot, uh, mbnnewsvideoweb.com and wherever you're watching us subscribe to us follow our daily newscast in 3d and thank you once again for over 250 million links on the internet because wherever you are <laughs>